some of your interesting tales that you've had about herping uh, just through the years. Oh my, there's so many of them. <laughs> um, one of my best was that I went to California one time and got an elephant trunk snake back when I didn't know how to keep them and oh. brought it back in a bag, found out they were supposed to be in water, it yes. died on the way back home. Aww. And uh, so I decided to put it out on the road and of all people to find it was uh, the curator of the Dallas Zoo at the time. <laughs> and I uh, just happened to, you know, like I was saying before, you know, stop and say, uh, you know, you see anything good tonight? Oh, just a DOR elephant trunk snake, just like it, you see them every day, you know. <laughs> but. Uh, just so many things like that. Uh, another good friend of mine, um, we have a lot of people who, like I said, come out to that area. And uh, like myself, I used to take some milk snakes and things like that down there to trade and, and uh, stuff like that back in the 70s and 80s. And my friend said, uh, do you lose anything? I said, no. He said, uh, do you hear of anybody lose anything? I said, no. He goes, well, what did you find? He goes, I found a California mountain king up on Juno Road. <laughs> no. And I made him pull it out and he actually had a, about a foot and a half long California mountain king snake that he found on Juno Road. And I'm like, what are the odds of somebody losing that snake and then to have Another someone else keeper. find it? So wow. Just things like that. Uh, there's been a few oddballs that have been found out that way. Uh, here lately, sulcata tortoises. Oh, there's been I bet. a few of those found out that way. I bet. So there are so many different so many different stories, most of them involving people and uh, people that from the early years, like uh, before California Zoological was started, I met some of the people that were working with Lloyd Lemke whenever he was first starting up his business, starting Orange County Zoological out of his garage. Hmm. And uh, we ended up staying at uh, Chamberlain's there in Langtree. Oh, wow. And, you know, some of the shenanigans that guy would pull. <laughs> he told me one time, there's a guy up front you need to go talk to. He said, he, I think he does snakes. So I went up there and I sat down on the bench and, and uh, <laughs> I'm sitting there and I'm talking to him about snakes and this guy doesn't understand a single thing I'm saying. <laughs> I'm actually drawing a snake in the dirt. You know, snakes. By that time I'd figured out Bill had played a nice trick on me. This guy was an immigrant that was waiting on Border Patrol to come and take him back to Mexico. So uh, just, just lots of different things like that. Uh, you get tired out there at night. I, I saw a guy one time run down the gravel road, jump on top of his car, and go all the way across it just to try to stay awake. Just, just different things like that. You see somebody sitting... You'd see somebody sitting by a road cut, and you know what they're doing. Waiting on one to come out? Yeah, they're waiting on a snake to come out that's, that's you know, 20 feet up in the air waiting for it to try to come down, so. That's funny. They're just, there's all kinds of tales. You know, people, uh, that how they caught their very first gray band. Oh, yeah. Those are some of their, their best oh, yeah. stories, or, yeah. you know, or how they got a particular one. And some I'm of those stories need to be recorded. Yeah. Some of those stories need to be recorded. Definitely, reported. definitely. Well, if you know of anyone who would love to share that with me, send them my way. Will I'd do. love to document it. Oh, yeah. It'd be fun. Awesome. It'd be fun. Well, um, tell me your favorite thing about working and just being in the Herp community. Oh, I love the people. That's, well, that's the yeah. main thing. I don't do this for a living. You know, the motel is my living. But I have a great time seeing the people. You know, I've come to this show, I saw a couple of snakes, I get to see everybody, and I'm happy. It's kind of like a family family. It really here. is. It really is. Yeah, I used to do this back up in Kansas City. I went to all the shows in the Midwest and come down to Texas, make all kinds of new friends. Oh, and, yeah. and you just, uh, you know, it's just it's a great time. It really is. We're all kind of a little close-knit community, and I like to believe that we would do anything for each other if, they, you know, if the need ever arose. So... So tell me why you like to vend at the Texas Reptile Expo, because you're one of the regulars here. It is fun. It, like I said, it's, it's meeting and seeing all the different people, mm -hmm. you know, and you never know who's going to walk in the door and you get to teach like little kids, oh, yeah. you know, about the reptiles and, uh, you know, teach them that they don't have to be scared of them, things like that. Yeah. But then it's sometimes it's not the kids, it's the parent that you oh, have yeah. to, kind to of. teach about. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, it's, it's great. It's a lot of fun. Well, one thing I like the, like about this show, not only are um, you know the vendors, the patrons, meeting new people, but I love the diversity in this yeah. show. A lot of shows you go to, and it's kind of a lot of the same thing for the most part, and you never know what you're going to find here. But it's something exciting and new at every table. 
I know, it is. I actually saw crabs for sale somewhere. <laughs> um, lady's got crabs on her table, but that, that's kind of an odd one. It is. But it, at least we don't have birds. I don't, I don't know if I'd want squawking birds at a reptile You know, it seemed show, like but. there was a point when there were no more birds for some reason, uh, allergies or something like that. That could be. But anyway. That could be, and that's one of the great things about snakes, you know, they don't bark, they don't... Uh, has smelly cat boxes. They don't mm -hmm. chase off the mailman. Exactly. You know, things like that. And feed a nice snake once a week, and they're happy. And exactly. Yeah, so very um, easy to take care man, of. Man, I'm looking at your. Are these your pythons yes. here? Yes. They're absolutely beautiful. Uh, tell us a little bit about. Uh, looks like there's only four or five snakes here, so probably yeah. have time to tell us about each one. Well, down on the bottom, we've got a. Uh, ball python. All of these are ball pythons, yes. actually. They just have different paint on them. Right. Different colors to them. Um, there's a clown on the bottom and an enchi clown. And this up top here is a pastel super enchi clown. And then we have one up here called a uh, an albino and an albino pied. Let's see if I can get one out here. Another interesting story about the pieds. That's an albino pied. Beautiful. I actually had someone ask one time, oh, okay, <laughs> I actually have uh, had a lady one time ask me, said, well, how do you get the, the white on that snake like that? <laughs> and I said, well, Clorox paintbrush and a lot of time. And she said, really? I said, no, not really. No. <laughs> oh, that's funny. You know, it's interesting what we kind of take for granted as people who work with the animals every day. And I do think it is amazing to not only teach them a little bit about care, and, but just overall that the animals are beautiful, are amazing, and, and something to be respected and that deserves to live. Yeah, and if you have somebody that's really, really scared of them, sometimes that's, that's kind of hard mm. to get them over it. But I try. You know, little baby steps sometimes. Yeah, well, I think that someone walking up and seeing an array of stunningly beautiful animals that you're just like so struck by their beauty when they're thinking of poisonous which that's a peeve of mine when people say poisonous poisonous black snake or poisonous brown snake that's going to come and try and kill them and then you've got these little puppy dogs that yeah. were that are every color of the rainbow it's really amazing so these are animals yeah. that you've reproduced oh yes what's your prize animal that you reproduced in the last year or two Oh, probably that Enchi Clown. That's beautiful. That Pastel Enchi Clown. I actually have one at home that's a super Pastel Super Enchi Clown. Wow. So it's even more yellow. Well, I bet you're not heartbroken to still be holding on to that one. Oh, no. No. No, it's fine. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for spending some time with us oh, you're today, very welcome. Roy. Very uh, welcome. I hope to do this again in the future. All right. Hope you guys like this one. Thank you. We'll see you next time.